my name is William Colhane, and I'm here to talk about some work I did with some of my colleagues at Purdue University on looking at aggregation specific problems and how to optimize the overlay for the aggregation portions. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of our problem definition, where we're coming from, move into our definitions and how we actually approach it, then I'll tell you how we implemented our approach, and then show you some of our results. So we looked around and saw that a lot of these systems that are being published recently for big data analysis are actually done in memory. So you have RDDS and Presto fairly recently where they found ways that if you distribute the data enough, you can throw everything in memory, making it a lot faster. You get rid of disk access as a bottleneck. Um, and more than that, there's this idea of aggregation of data. So if you look at MapReduce Merge is an extension of MapReduce, which specifically adds a merge phase, which is a synonym of aggregation, which shows that there are people out there looking for ways to just aggregate things faster. And there's a whole class of problems built around that. So if we can look at the aggregation, that's actually very useful. If you look at the way you would typically want to aggregate, and I'll get into it a little bit more later, it's probably a tree overlay of your nodes. Um, there's been some research, not necessarily in the cloud area, but in some other areas to, that show you can mathematically model these trees and try to find optima to try to minimize the latency. So we wanted to do that specifically for this problem to allow you to find the optimal uh, tree overlay with minimal analysis and configuration of your data that you can just plug it in. So start off with, we looked at this idea of compute aggregate, this idea that your data is spread across nodes and you're going to run some computation at those nodes to create some intermediate output and then all you have to do is aggregate that output in some way. Now the computation at the local nodes is very data dependent. If you want to optimize that, you have to know your data, you have to know your systems, you have to know your algorithms. However, we've looked at this aggregation layer and said we can use just minimal information and improve that using a very simple heuristic. And that heuristic actually applies to the fan out. So at the bottom here, I have three graphs, or three diagrams, which show three different trees of how you can aggregate data from 16 nodes. And the only difference here is the fan out of the tree. You can start and do everything two by two, or you can throw everything up to one node at, from the very beginning. So the question is, which of these is optimal? As for what sorts of problems we're solving, uh, Anytime you would merge sorted elements, for instance, so if you're going to grep some logs and get some entries by timestamps, you have those in sorted order and you want the entirety sorted order, you're merging. If you take min, max, and average, word count, top K matching, these are all very common problems which can be broken down into aggregation problems. So in order for our system to work, these aggregation functions have to follow certain rules. Uh, the first is associativity, so the idea that you can actually merge things at different levels, that if you've got some set of inputs, x bar, and another set x bar prime, you can merge them up and down the tree. It doesn't matter where in the tree you merge it or aggregate it with other results as long as they all eventually reach the same root. It's cumulative, which is a very similar property in that uh, you can just add levels and eventually merge things up. And commutative, the order doesn't matter. If you've got one set of inputs on the left and one on the right, that's the same as having the, the first one on the right and the other on the left. Now, notice that we claim these things are equivalent, not equal. So if, for instance, you'd have, uh, you're taking top K match and you have K plus one results which have the same score and you want to choose the top K, Different algorithms may, or different uh, aggregations may take a different top K, but they're all equivalent results because the K top results have the same score. So not necessarily equal outputs, but equivalent outputs. So based on this, we decided to create a mathematical model of our aggregation system. In order for us to create the model, we had to make several assumptions. Now it's important to note that 
our assumptions are on latency, not on correctness. If your system does not meet our assumptions, we will still give you correct output. We just can't make any guarantees about the minimal latency. So the first thing that we do is we assume that you have an aggregation overlay tree, that each input is included exactly once. If you include something twice or you don't include it at all, you're going to get very different results than if you include it once. Uh, we do require full and balanced trees. So if you'll remember, I showed you the three different fanouts, 2, 4, and 16 for 16 nodes. You'll notice all of those were completely balanced and all of them were full at the bottom. We require monotonic aggregation with respect to size. So if you take an aggregation function and you give it a size input and then you increase that size, it's going to take longer to aggregate the second result. Uh, we also require monotonic and constant ratio size changes, which is, so if for instance you're doing a word count with, you've got maps of words to their count and you've got the same words in every set, then when you merge them together, the output is going to be the same size as one of the inputs. If you have a sorted element and you're merging them, the output is going to be the same size as all of the inputs together. Now if you have multiple layers of the tree, uh, you, we have to assume something about whether the ratio keeps increasing or keeps decreasing. And what we said is the problems we're looking at, it's either always going to increase or always going to decrease. If you're merging elements, the, a layer in the hierarchy is never going to have a smaller output size than the layer below it. If you're doing a word count, it's always going to have the same. There's no way to increase the size as you're aggregating and then apply the same aggregation function to more data and decrease the size. And we do require a certain level of homogeneity just to allow things to, it's not a true synchronous system, but there's a level of pseudo-synchrony for our mathematical model so that we could uh, predict latency. So we have several variables and I'm going to cover some of them here so that the table in the next uh, slide will make some sense. We have a certain number of leaves at the base of our aggregation tree. We have the fan out of our aggregation tree. Each aggregation node has a set of inputs which it applies some function to. And that aggregation function has a certain cost at that node. And the final variable, which turns out to be vitally important, is y or y sub zero. So what we define as uh, y sub zero is the ratio of the final output of aggregation to the size of one of the inputs. In the case of sorting, for example, it's going to be n, the number of nodes, because if you have the same input size at each of the leaves, you merge them together, the final output is the size of all the leaves combined. If you have, for instance, word count, uh, assuming that all the word maps are, have the same words in them, it's going to be one. If you have word count where you have disparate entries, it's going to be somewhere between one and n. All right, so what we found is that value of y is actually the only thing that really affects the optimal fan out of the tree. And what you see here is that we've actually managed to prove for um, all values of y and all linear, assuming the cost of aggregation is linear to input size, we've managed to prove the optimal fan out. Now, proving the sublinear and superlinear cases is a little bit more difficult because you have to know the degree of sub super or sublinearity in order for the analysis to make sense. Even so, we've managed to prove a few of these cases. That little asterisk is we've managed to prove that the optimal fan out is somewhere between 2 and E, inclusive on the bottom, exclusive on the top. So E is pretty close, and what that allows us to do is just use only y, zero, y or y sub zero, which works out to be equivalent, to tell you what your optimal fan out is. Um, which makes it really simple. There's only a single variable we need to know about your aggregation function to provide you with an optimal overlay. Now, it's not entirely clear what a fan out of E means. Um, we can tell you that's the optimal, but as far as implementation, you're probably going to choose three. 
All right, so how did we go about doing this? Well, we created a subsystem that you can plug into your larger environment. And your big data analysis system just has to do all the computation at the local nodes, read in the data, do all the computation, and then it sends the list of nodes to our controller and says, here are the leaf nodes for aggregation. Our controller then uh, fires up some vertices and connects them to your leaf nodes, aggregates all the results, and just returns those results or throws them on a file system. So all you need to do to let our system work is, one, provide the aggregation function. We don't know how to aggregate everything off the top of our heads. Uh, provide us with the Y ratio and your list of leaf nodes. That's all we need. Uh, we actually implemented this in Flume Java, uh, allowing it to plug into some common systems. Given that this is the way we approached it, we were able to run some experiments. We ran it on Amazon EC2, which is a very common cloud system, and it actually matches some of our assumptions very well in that um, the networking is a black box. So some of the other systems you look at nowadays are looking at changing the networking layer. Well, if you go to a cloud system like EC2, you don't have that option. You just know that you have servers and they're somewhere, so you can't make any additional assumptions. Uh, any additional assumptions on networking. So we did make sure to maintain our assumptions, the idea of uh, heterogeneity because all the uh, nodes we chose were the same size, the uh, same number of layers, and really the big one is we only ran the experience that you'll see here where the leaf nodes is a power of the fan out so that we can have full and balanced trees. Using that, we generated some micro benchmarks which generated data at leaves, and then just you know through the uh, data one level up, that took that level up took the total input size it had, and just futzed around for some period of time that was linear in the size, generated data that matched the y zero times one of the inputs, and continued on. And we ran that for 16 leaves, and I'll show you exactly the behavior we got. And then I'll show you some of our real world applications where we did word count on some, um, and top K matching on some Hadoop cluster logs for both 16 and 64 leaves to show this is scalable. So this is, these are the results that we see. This is actually the same data graph two different ways. And um, in the left graph, what you see is that if you have a specific ratio of output to input size, the characteristics of the line, you know, it starts out increasing, ends up decreasing, and in the middle there's some sort of inflection point. And over on the right, you can see exactly why that is. So if you have a lower fan out, it's much better when your ratio is very small. However, it is a whole lot more reactive to any changes in that ratio. Whereas the higher fan out starts out slower but it's much more stable. So there's some point in the middle where you want to switch. Uh, and that goes back to the heuristics we provided. That shows you the behavior, but it doesn't tell you how well our model actually predicts, which is kind of important if you want to trust our heuristics. So here we show each of those four lines from the previous graph on the left against our model. So what we did is we took the, the results from fan out of two, plug those into our model and created a predicted line, and you'll see for all four of our results, the predicted line is pretty indicative of where the experimental values ended up. So what we show from this is that our model isn't necessarily perfect, but it's pretty good, and that our results should be able to hold over. So uh, moving forward, these are our real world applications. Um, on the top, you see our top K matching and it, again, we predicted the values in the same way as the micro benchmarks, and you'll see our predictions are pretty good. In fact, when you move over to 64 leaves, where this is actually more important, you'd expect as your system grows, it's going to be more important to create better and better aggregation systems. It's, the prediction is uh, more closer to the experimental values 
um, not nominal, but the ratio size, than it is for 16 notes. So our system, we expect it to scale better so that as you increase the number of nodes, you're actually going to want to make sure you use this. So just to sum up what we've done so far, we looked at the compute aggregate problem and defined exactly what we needed it to be to allow us to work with this. We mathematically modeled our aggregation time on top of that and provided some heuristics, which are very lightweight. You only need to know one variable, realistically. Um, and then we can optimize aggregation latency on top of that. It's important to note that you don't have to use our system, our results, our heuristics. You can use them however you want. So if you know that your uh, ratio is always less than one, you can go ahead and combine two by two every time. There's no reason for you to necessarily use our subsystem. We implement that subsystem in Flume Java and experimentally validated the, our model. So what do we still have left to do? Well, I showed you that graph and you saw a lot of empty boxes. Uh, more than half are filled, but we'd like to be able to maybe fill in some of those others. Uh, they're probably going to be more complicated. It won't be as easy as two or E or whatever. So figuring out exactly what to do that. Because we do require you to know your ratio of output to input size, we want a way to predict that based on your aggregation function. That you can just provide us your function or maybe your function in some sample data and we can tell you what that ratio is for future reference. Or if someone has already run your function, we can use that rather than you having to tell us what it is all the time. Um, Obviously, our graphs were pretty sparse because we required the leaves be a power of the fan out. So increasing that uh, testing to show exactly when things are optimal um, and also deal with the broken assumptions that are all those intermediate data points and figure out if there's some way that we can alter things slightly. For instance, if you have a eight nodes and a fan out of uh, four, well, you're going to end up with one layer of a fan out of two and one layer of a fan out of four. So the, the question is, which layer is which? And figuring out exactly when to use which to optimize is something we're still looking into. Um, we do require homogenous uh, nodes at each level of the hierarchy. So if you have three levels of hierarchy, the top one can be different than the middle one, can be different than the bottom one but all the nodes at the bottom level have to be the same. So trying to figure out how to deal with heterogeneity within and between layers is something that is very interesting to us. And finally, we're working on streaming input. We rec this current model assumes that all the data is readily available at the leaves. You do everything at one level at once and then pass it forward. The idea of being able to chunk your data or tap into live streams is something that moving forward we really want to look at. All right, so now I'm ready for questions. So I was really curious about actually those two last points you mentioned. So what are your thoughts about streaming? Does it have a, a, a significant impact? Um, what we're looking at is right now we're trying to reduce latency of the tree. And moving forward into streaming, it may be more important to look at bandwidth. And we normally think of the two as connected. However, there are some interesting things because what you do when you decrease the uh, fan out is you're increasing the parallelism. You're doing more stuff at once at the cost of having to redo some stuff at each layer. So the question of minimal latency may not be as important as increased bandwidth to allow you the minimal total latency for the stream rather than the minimal total latency for one chunk of data. So I was encouraged that your, um, uh, the graphs you presented toward the end uh, tracked pretty well, but, but there are one or two cases where the, the gap seems to be widening a little bit. Um, so on, yeah, the, right there. Um, and, uh, and so I was just curious if, uh, for example, the, the A, A um, graph there, um, do, do you know what the next 
second order effect is, a third order effect that may be able to tighten the estimates? Uh, we're not entirely sure on that. Um, and it could be that, for instance, two is not a great data point to base the rest of the graph on. Maybe if we'd chosen four, the entire graph would have looked tighter. Uh, it could be there are some additional overhead latencies with two that aren't associated with the rest of the graph. So that's one possibility. What I'll point out here is B is actually the exact same thing extended to 64 nodes, and it tightens up again. So there are obviously some other effects there. We feel that it's close enough and that we can extrapolate to some extent, although there are obviously some limits to our extrapolation. All right, thanks. <clears throat> I was also curious, having done this work and having actually tried to implement it, do you see extensions or things that you would like from the ISA, from the infrastructure service providers interface, or EC2 for instance? Because clearly underneath the covers is a lot of mess. Yes. Um, the biggest thing we noted is actually the latency of communication. So we're running all these experiments on EC2. For a separate paper, uh, we were, we're just looking at top K exactly. We found out the latency was very high. We ran it on a set of IBM Blade servers, and immediately our latency for communication just dropped by almost an order of magnitude. So we've, we found that the communication time is very slow in at least EC2 and maybe some other cloud providers, which since they're focused on just providing the storage and uh, providing some computational power, maybe they're not focused on that, but that would be our preference. Yeah. 